Welcome to the channel. In today's video, we're going to review the Sonoff SNZB-03P battery-powered PIR motion sensor that was sent to me. Before we get into the specifics, let me ask a rhetorical question. In the time of millimeter microwave sensors that can sense the movement of your chest while breathing to determine your presence, is a battery-powered PIR motion sensor even relevant? This is the question we'll be answering in this review. So let's dive on in and see if this cheap, stylish PIR motion sensor is even relevant today. The SNZB-03P PIR motion sensor shares its stylish looks with the 06P millimeter motion sensor that we reviewed previously. If you missed that video, it's available in the pop-up above. You get the same basic form factor and mounting although the unit is slightly shorter and obviously lacks the USB-C socket that is required for power on the 06P. To access the battery, you need to twist the body from the base and the top of the unit in opposite directions. You need to apply a reasonable amount of force to do this, so make sure you have a good grip. This gives you access to the CR2744 3 volt battery, which is one of the secrets of the success of this sensor. More on that later. The device shares the same magnetic mounting plate from the 06 that allows for flexibility in locating the device. The device also allows for over 90 degrees of adjustment of the device relative to the mounting plate that is combined with 110 degrees of active sensitivity from the sensor itself. Although the magnetic base is a very welcome addition and something that some other manufacturers do not include for a more permanent mounting, Sonoff also provide a 3M sticker or screws and raw plugs for a more permanent mounting. There is a single multi-purpose button on the side that is used for pairing and also resetting the unit. And to complete the package, you get a user manual that's available online, links in the description. The O3 is a Zigbee-based device and can connect to Alexa or Google with the appropriate hub. Alternatively, you can connect through a Sonoff Zigbee hub such as a ZB Bridge, an NS Panel Pro, a ZB Dongle or an iHost. Dependent upon which connection option you choose will determine the feature sets that are available to you. We'll be walking through connecting the O3 to Home Assistant with both ZHA and Zigbee to MQTT. One of the main features of the O3 is that it is a Zigbee 3.0 device. This will improve interoperability and stability of the mesh network to maintain a consistent connection. Remember that this is an endpoint device, whereas the millimeter wavelength O6 is a router. As such, if you're looking for a device that will reinforce your Zigbee network, then the O6 is preferred over the O3. Your specific user case will weigh heavily on your decision. Sonoff have made some significant advances in relation to their power management. Combining this with the large CR2744 battery means this device is supposed to provide three years of battery life under normal use. Obviously, as this is new to market, this claim cannot be confirmed at this stage, but I'd still expect two plus years of battery life, which is best in class for such a device. The detection period for the O3 is rated at five seconds, whereas the 06 millimeter microwave presence sensor has a detection time of 15 seconds. The ability to set a custom detection duration will be dependent upon which platform you are connecting to. All Sonoff hosts except for the ZB bridge are supported, with Amazon Alexa and Google missing out, at least at this stage. Good news for Home Assistant is that if you are connecting through Zigbee to MQTT, then custom detection durations are supported. However, ZHA is not, well, at least at this time. If used in conjunction with a Sonoff bridge, such as an NS Panel Pro or iHost, the O3 can determine the ambient lighting to determine if the light should be turned on. Remember that you can achieve the same results in Home Assistant through coding of the automation. It should be noted that the O3 achieves this through a relative illumination level and not an absolute illumination level. As such, it returns values such as bright and not 800 lux. Hopefully, this will be turned into an absolute illumination reading in future firmware releases. To add the O3 via ZHA, you'll need to navigate to Settings, Devices and Services, Add Integration. Select Add a Zigbee device. Now press and hold the button on the side of the O3 for five seconds to activate pairing mode. A red LED will flash on the top next to the sensor. The device will go through its initialization and configuration mode 
after the device has finished its pairing operation, you'll be presented with the device is ready to use. Change the name and set the area according to your requirements. Once set, press the back button, navigate down to your Zigbee Home Automations and select the devices. Select your Sonoff 03 device. You will see that there are two sensors available, motion and occupancy. Also displayed will be a diagnostics for battery note to identify. At this point, you can see that you cannot set the custom detection duration. Now let's do the same through Zigbee to MQTT. Remember that if you've added the O3 through ZHA, then you'll need to delete it there before you can add it to Zigbee to MQTT. As Zigbee to MQTT is an add-on, you'll need to have added this previously. If you don't have Zigbee to MQTT loaded, then follow the link in the description above. Now, if you have set up your Zigbee to MQTT to display in the sidebar, then navigate to that now. Now press Permit Join and press and hold the pairing button on the side of the O3 for five seconds. The red light on the top of the device will illuminate. The device will be found and after a brief interview period will be fully configured within Zigbee to MQTT. Click on the hyperlink for the name of the device. To rename your device, press the pencil icon to the right. Give your device a name. Make sure to update the Home Assistant Entity IDs and press Rename. Now let's see what entities are exposed through Zigbee to MQTT. Click on the device and select Exposes. You should now see the exposed entities of occupancy, battery percentage, illuminancy, which is subjective level, not a lux level, and a motion timeout. You can adjust this figure from five seconds up to one minute. Of the two connection protocols, I'm more inclined to use the Zigbee to MQTT, as this allows for greater control of the device. But you might prefer to utilize the built-in native support of ZHA. Let me know in the comments which you prefer. The cost of the device is 1190 USD, links in the description, which is a great value for money considering the features offered. However, I hear you say in the comments, but the millimeter wavelength is only 1490 USD. So why would I buy this version? I suggest the answer is simple. Although they provide similar functionality, they serve different needs. The O6 must have a power outlet close to the device, whereas the O3 can be located anywhere. Since the O6 is powered, it acts as a router and hence reinforces your network, whereas the O3 is an endpoint and will not enhance your mesh network. The O3 has a confirmed detection range of 6 meters compared to the O6 is 4 meters. The O3 has a detection speed that can be adjusted down to 5 seconds, whereas the O6 is substantially slower at 15 seconds. So the O3 is suitable more for areas with traffic such as entrances, corridors or stairs, places where quick detection of movement is essential. Whereas the O6 is more suitable to bathrooms or living rooms, places where near stationary objects need to be identified for occupancy. So to answer the question we posted at the start of this, is this sensor still relevant? I'd say yes. With a battery life projected at three years, increased range and an excellent motion detection timeout of five seconds, this is a great sensor and gets the thumbs up from Smart Home Australia. If you've enjoyed the video, then please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing and joining the channel. If you'd like to be notified of similar content, then ding that bell. Until the next one, let's try and make sense of all those motion sensors we have.